In this video we're going to talk about radio buttons, check boxes, the select element and text areas. So to start off let's create our form element and add in our action which we'll just leave blank and the method which we'll be using get. And now let's create some radio buttons. These are inputs of type radio. And the name I'm just going to put on off. Also give this a value of on. And another radio button, an input of type radio. And the name of this will be the same as the previous radio button. And the value will be off. So you may be wondering why these two radio buttons have the actual same name attribute set on off. With radio buttons, essentially what they do is they allow a user to select one option from a predefined number of options. So in this case we're creating two radio buttons and therefore the user can select one of these options and only one at a time. So by using the same name value for both radio inputs, we're basically creating a form of a radio button group. So let's add in some labels so we can see which radio button is which in the browser. So I'm going to put a label for on and an ID to match the labels for attribute. Then one more label for our off radio button. and an ID yet again to match the labels for attribute. Right, so let's not forget to put in our input of type submit. And it's going to change the value of submit the form. And close it just like that. So let's take a look at radio buttons in the browser. Saving it and opening up the browser. So as you can see, we have our on button and an off button. So I can go ahead and select this on button, but if I go ahead and select the off button, the on button will be automatically deselected. So like I was saying, in this group that we have, i.e. radio buttons with the same name attribute, the user can select one from a group of predefined options. So you cannot select both at the same time. So let's select on and click submit the form. And as you can see, the query string says on off, which is the name attribute for these radio buttons equals on. And if we select off, we'll get on off equals off in the query string. So now let's take a look at some checkboxes. Checkboxes are an input of type checkbox. And then we pass in a name, I'm just going to put Twitter, then a value of yes. Let's create another input of type checkbox and set the name to Facebook. And the value to yes. Right, so I'm just going to add some labels <clears throat> so we can see which checkbox is which in the browser. And an ID to match that labels for attribute. And one last label. With an ID to match the labels for attribute. Right, so let's go ahead and save this and check out checkboxes in the browser. As you can see, I can select both checkboxes or I can select one or the other or none of them. So these are quite different to the radio buttons, which are essentially in some form of group as they have the same name attribute set. The checkboxes they work like this. We can select or deselect them at our leisure. 
let's go ahead and select on and Twitter and Facebook and submit the form. See on off equals on. That was our radio button. And Twitter equals yes and Facebook equals yes. So that's essentially how radio buttons work and how checkboxes work as well. So now let's check out the select element. The select element essentially displays a little kind of drop down list where the user can select some predefined options. So we use this with the select opening and closing tags. We pass in a name to the opening select tag. I'm just going to call this country. Then inside our select element, we have options. Just like that. And these options have values. So for the first one, I'm just going to give it a value of US and enter in US here. So this will be displayed on our little list item. And an option with the value of AUS for Australia. And one more for the UK. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and check this out in the browser. So as you can see, we have some little clickable drop down list. So we can click on it and we'll have a little list drop down and we can make selections. So this time let's select off and just select Facebook and we'll set this to Australia. Click submit the form. As you can see, we have our radio buttons value, our checkboxes value, and our select elements value is equal to the options value that I had selected. So these are each options and they each have their values. So that's essentially how the select element works in HTML. So let's take a look at the text area element. Text area, opening and closing tags, and we can pass in a name attribute here as well. It's going to put in message. So let's save this and have a look at what the text area renders in the browser. As you can see, we have some form of text area where the user can enter in a message or some form of data. Let's try this out. This time we'll select on, we'll select Twitter and Facebook, and we'll select the UK and type in a message. Click submit the form. As we can see, we have our radio buttons value. Twitter equals yes and Facebook equals yes for our checkboxes. The country equals UK, which was our select element. And message, which is the name attribute of this text area, equals the content that I've actually typed into that text area. This is a message. So I hope you've learned a little bit about radio buttons, checkboxes, the select element, and the text area in HTML.